Hello, a little too close for comfort. Are your climbing abilities really determined at birth? Well, I went down a huge rabbit hole for you guys to find out. Thank you so much for joining me. It is three minute Thursday. And before we put the clock on, I just wanna say all the studies I mentioned in this video are linked in the description below. Let's get started. There are a lot of things that we talk about when it comes to genetics. For example, your height. Chris Ring wanted to find out, does your height really matter? So he pulled in the data of 4,000 elite climbers. The sweet spot seems to be five foot eight, but as you can see from this graph, it actually varies quite a bit. And there are many outliers. Adam Andra, for example, is six foot and he is by far one of the best climbers in the world. Ashima Shirishi, for example, super strong climber and she's only five foot one. How about that ape index? You know the distance between your fingers when you spread them apart? In general, a longer ape index is supposed to give you further reach, which is supposed to be helpful. The average ape index of elite climbers is 2.3. However, there are outliers just like there are in height. Kai Leitner, for example, has a 7.0 ape index. Whoa, that's long. Babsy Zangler, who is a famous outdoor climber, has a negative 0.8 index. Body type is a little bit more complicated. In this case, I'm talking about your height to weight ratio, your BMI. Luckily, Lattice Training put together a lot of information about elite climbers. The average BMI for females is 19.3, and for men, it's 21.1. Keep in mind that the basic healthy BMI is about 18.5 to 24.9. How about other genetic things, like how big your hands are? Definitely, the bigger your hands are, are, the easier it is for you to get leverage on things. Same thing with your feet. Did you know that by having bigger feet, you have more leverage in your ankles? It certainly seems that genetics might be playing a huge factor in your ability to climb, or does it? There was a study done about what is the most important parts of climbing. And what they determined was that the things that you can train, such as your strength, endurance, and flexibility, are more determinant of your ability to climb hard than your genes are. That means that if you have a negative two ape index like I do, I can still climb hard. I just have to train maybe a little bit more than someone who has a zero or a seven plus. All of these things are affected by your genes. For example, your flexibility. Some people, are just genetically more flexible than others. But does that mean you can't be flexible? Does that mean you can't train to become more flexible? You've probably seen the documentary Free Solo. Alex Honnold gets tested and we find out that the synapses that connect fear were very slow for Alex. But here's the thing, you can train your mind just as much as you can train your muscles. It's something that I'm certainly working on right now, so not a master over here. <laughs> Let's talk about what you can do with this information. It might be helpful to actually figure out what you're genetically struggling with. For example, are you a little bit shorter? Maybe you need to practice a bit more dynamic movements. If you're really tall like me, you probably need a little bit more core tension. This is just a great way to get started to ensure that the struggles your genes might provide are minimized and your ability to climb hard is maximized. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And before you go full swing into training, check out this video where I actually talk about what you should do to maximize 60 minutes of training so you can get the most out of your climbing session. Is that an outlet cover? Check it. Yeah, that's meant for that. That's crazy. No. Let's see if that was weird, huh? 